Well, good morning and welcome to worship with the people of St. John United Church of Christ in Robinson, Texas. We are so glad for those who are gathered in this room and those who are gathered online this morning. Your presence enriches our worship and we're glad that you are here. Uh, we begin every service at St. John by reminding you that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. Here are a few announcements in the life of our community. Uh, church council will be meeting today at noon. Uh, our primary decision will be about the continued COVID situation. So please pray for us as we make some difficult decisions this day. Are there any other announcements? If not, please rise for the call to worship. I will read the light print and ask you to respond in the bold. In the middle of strife, God is with us. Come, O oh Lord, in your power and protection. Through every trial and temptation, God is faithful to the generations before us. Our God is faithful in these days as well. St. John, we will make it through this trial and into the future. God is good all the time. Come, let us worship together. Let us approach God in a spirit of confession. The scriptures remind us that all have fallen short of the glory of God. So we come before God with this call to confession this morning. Almighty God, our sins are plentiful. We have sinned against you in thought, in word, and in deed. In things we have done, in things left undone. Have mercy on us, O God, and hear our prayer. Let us offer our prayers to the Lord in silence. Siblings in Christ, hear the promise of God. Christ has forgiven our sin and restored us to new and everlasting life. Redemption is here. Amen. Let us say the words we would normally sing. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Well, as you know, congregational singing is uh, one of the most dangerous things to do right now. So we instead offer a solo in worship. Uh, please contact me if you'd be interested in doing one. Even if we need to switch back to video worship for a while, you could film one on your smartphone and send it in. And I'd be glad to put that in. Uh, this morning, I just want to sing What a Friend We Have in Jesus uh, with a full verse played at the beginning. Trouble anywhere. We should never be dis. 
Uh, there are no children in person among us. I know that there may be some joining us online this morning. So please know, St. John kids, you are important to us. You are loved and you are welcome here even in these odd days. Today we will be finishing our summer series in the book of Genesis. Uh, we'll be ending with one of my favorite stories in the entire book, uh, not just because the main character shares a name with me, but because of what he does. So here now, the Spirit is saying to the church, Genesis 32, 22 through 31. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jephthah. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise, everything that he had. Jacob was left alone. And the man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket. And Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go, unless... You bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And Jacob said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his head. Sisters and brothers, these words are true and can be trusted. Thanks be to God. Well, it had been a long night, to say the least. You know the story up to this point, the story we've been tracing for six weeks now. The story that begins with Abraham and Sarah being called out of their normal daily life to follow God, even at an old age. The story of Sarah laughing when she heard that she would still give birth at 90, and God causing it to come true. The story of Hagar, their servant, being cast into the wilderness, but nevertheless meeting God there and saying that God is the God who sees. The story of Abraham merely sacrificing Isaac. The story that continued when Isaac found a wife. And the story that last week we left with these twins of Isaac. Isaac and, Rebecca's children, uh, Isaac and Rebecca's children, Jacob and Esau, striving and fighting one another, and finally Jacob tricking Esau out of his birthright. The story picks up now some 20 or so years later. Jacob has grown up quite a bit. He ran away after stealing his father's blessing ran back to his grandmother's homeland, took two wives there out of a sense of trickery that followed him, just as he had deceived others. Laban deceived him into marrying not one, but two women. The deception follows him, the lies and the tricks follow him, and when it is time to leave that land and return home, we check in on our story today. We can almost feel Jacob's anxiety because the last time he was home, his brother had sworn to kill him. This was no exaggeration. Remember, his brother was a talented hunter. Jacob was more of an indoors kind of guy, what we might call a little homebody. He didn't get out much, but Esau, his brother, was big and burly. He was used to hunting game, and he was mad enough at Jacob to make him the hunted. And so here now, decades later, Jacob is coming home, 
with his huge family and his livestock, terrified that Esau won't just kill him, but make a, ma a massacre of everything he loves. It's a terrifying and anxiety-producing story. And so as Jacob leaves with his family, he begins to split them up, thinking that Esau can't possibly find all of them. And he splits them up more and more until finally at this story, Jacob is all alone the night before he is to be home. With his soul nearly bursting, thinking about meeting that brother that so long ago pledged to kill him. He doesn't know how tomorrow will go. He's not going to get much sleep tonight. As if he would get any rest at all, all of a sudden he is no longer alone, but there is someone with him. At first, this person, this being, doesn't seem like much of a friend. It seems like he's getting mugged in the wilderness. But the person has the chance to take his belongings, and he doesn't. He continues to wrestle with Jacob for hours and hours into the night, even until day begins to break. Somewhere in the midst of the fight, Jacob realizes this is no ordinary mugging. This is no criminal on the street. That he is actually wrestling with God. You see, for so long, Jacob had been worried about what his brother would, would do. He forgot that he needed to reconcile with God. Because ultimately, yes, Jacob had deceived his whole family, and parts of his family had deceived him. But the ultimate sin was not to Esau or to Isaac or to his father-in-law Laban. The ultimate sin that Jacob committed was against God and God alone. And so Jacob didn't need to worry what Esau was about to do. Here in this moment, he had to face God. All those years of lying, all those years of deception had finally caught up to him, and he was face to face with the God of the universe wrestling through the night. As the story would go on after this metaphorical and physical wrestling match ends, the next day does come. Jacob does meet Esau, and Esau forgives him and welcomes him with open arms. So sisters and brothers, what can we learn from this ancient and beautiful story? First of all, we learn that there were two faithful fighters in the wrestling ring that night. Both God and Jacob were faithful to show up in this moment where it would have been easier for either one of them to once again skirt their responsibilities. You see, God was faithful to show up and wrestle with Jacob in his moment of greatest need. God could have been sitting on high in heaven and said, wow, it's awful that you have this problem. God could have been sitting up and high and judgmental and not involved himself in the human world around him. But God is always involved in this world. God was faithful to wrestle his anxious father. Just as Jacob could have at the moment that this happened given up, said, you win, I'm done wrestling, go away. But the text says that Jacob refused to let go of the man that was wrestling him until he learned his name. Jacob refused to stop struggling, refused to stop wrestling. Oh, friends, how easily do we give up in life sometimes? How easily do we stop wrestling and stop fighting the things that we know we should be fighting because it's hard or because we're tired? What I see most in this story is a story of a God 
and a human that are faithful to wrestle with one another when the time comes. St. John, I don't know what questions you're facing in these hard days. I think we're all asking how a plague like this can get so out of hand. I don't know what questions you have for God these days. Maybe you've lost an income in all of this. Maybe you've lost an opportunity. Maybe just losing that sense of normal. Wherever you are today, I want you to remember that God is a faithful wrestling partner. God is faithful to enter that ring with you if you will be faithful to enter it as well. But I want you to notice what happens to Jacob. He refuses to let go until he learns this wrestling partner's name. And you know what? That never happens. Jacob's questions don't get answered, but God is faithful to wrestle with him nonetheless. This side of eternity, this side of heaven, we may never get all of the answers that we seek. Some of our questions are so large and complex that there is no simple one sentence answer. But we do know this. That even if we will not know the answer to every question in this life, that God continues to take on flesh and wrestle it out with us here on this earth. In this story today, it was a physical wrestling match. I'm guessing most of us are not fit for a physical wrestling match today, but nevertheless, God is still moving and still working on this earth even now. And God is faithful to be with us in the questions, even if we sometimes don't find the answer. Because what Jacob did receive that day was better than any answer he could have asked for. In the fight, in the battle, in the wrestling, instead of getting the answer he sought, Jacob instead received a blessing from God on high. God said, your name has been Jacob, which means deceiver or heel grabber, but now your name will be Israel, for you have struggled with God and with humans and have prevailed. Did you know that's what Israel means? Strives with God, struggles with God and prevails. Jacob didn't receive the answers he was looking for that day, but received something much better and much deeper. God's blessing going forward. Siblings in Christ, what would it look like if, yes, we bring our honest questions to God, but even more so, we simply seek God's blessing? God's blessing for our lives, God's blessing for our community and our church and our state and our nation, and maybe even for our enemies as well. What would it look like if we were okay with living into the hard questions that don't have answers, but instead were fully and wholeheartedly seeking after God's blessing? What an amazing world would that be. The final observation from this story, and then we will be through. Something that hit me a little different this read through than it ever has before is that Jacob is permanently marked from this battle. He's permanently marked from this wrestling match with a hip injury. Now, I, I, I've often taught this message to youth groups and to college groups who don't quite understand what that means, but I've been so amazed as I've worked with this church for two years to watch how you are faithful to continue serving God even when it is hard to move and hard to get around. So perhaps there are some in this room today that can identify with Jacob, that life has been full of wrestling matches, questions, and blessings 
but you still leave limping and injured. On this day, I want you to know that God is with you, too. That in this place, if you don't feel well, if you do not walk well, God is with you, too. God has not forsaken or abandoned you. Indeed, God has wrestled with you and has blessed you even if we don't know the answers. So friends, as we face coronavirus, as we face this new day and this next day, let us remember that God is a faithful wrestling partner. God is a faithful fighter. God is faithful to step into the ring with you if you will be faithful to step into the ring with God. You can bring your toughest questions, and though they may not always get answered, you will always be blessed, even if it leaves you with me. Amen. As we continue in worship today, Joanne is going to provide some special music for meditation. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. You know, sometimes pastors pause and consider what the most important part of a worship service might be, or at least where the climax of the service occurs. Some folks greatly prefer the singing and the music. I come from a Baptist tradition that greatly values the preaching. There are traditions that have communion weekly that would see that as the climax of the service. But I've been wondering if maybe the climax of our service is when we come before God to pray. Having read God's words, having sung God's praises, having given our gifts to God on high, perhaps the climax of the service is when we come before God to speak, and yes, also to listen. 
And so if you are in person or online this morning, let us bring our requests and our praises to the God who hears. We will begin with a moment of silent prayer. I will then voice a prayer for us, and then we will all say the Lord's Prayer together. Come, let us pray to the Lord. God who wrestled Jacob in the wilderness, God who is faithful to be with us in every fight and every question this day, we praise you for your excellent goodness. We praise you for creating all that is seen and all that is unseen. God, we lift up our world to you today, so full of strife and tension. Rest over that tension, dear Lord. May your presence and your loving, mighty hand be at work. We pray for our nation, for our leaders, for the people whom our leaders' decisions impact. We pray for wisdom, for clear data, for hope in the darkness. We pray for our state, O oh God, and our state's leadership as they make tough decisions. We pray for more testing, more treatment, more vaccines, for healthcare workers, for doctors and nurses, for all hospital workers. We lift up our church to you, dear God, all those whom we hold dear. Keep us safe, God. We pray for the sick and those who take care of them. Be a constant comfort in these days. Grant us wisdom and a vision, dear God, that we may carry out your good work. And now we are bold to pray as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as you know, it is not safe to pass around a plate that we are all touching right now. So we have offering plates available in the back. We are accepting offering as well through the mail so that we can continue to support God's good work here in God's church. On a personal note, thank you for your continued giving at this time. I am always blessed and impressed at St. John's generosity. Please rise now as we continue the service with the doxology and a prayer of dedication over our offerings. Let us speak the words we would normally sing. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we offer back to you what we have been given, our treasure, our time, and our lives. Bless our gifts and use them for your purposes. Amen. Well, we come to the point in the service where we confess our faith to one another. And what better words to use to confess our faith than some of the most ancient. These words that have been spoken by Christians since almost the very beginning of Christianity. Let us confess now our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection and the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it has been a joy to worship with you today. I'm so thankful that you are here. Uh, council members, please remember that we have a meeting after worship. Hear now the closing charge of benediction. God is faithful to wrestle with those who will faithfully respond. We will bring our honest questions to the God who hears. Jesus Christ is faithful to save even on the roughest of days. We place our faith in Christ, the Lord of our lives. The Holy Spirit is sustaining us still, that we may all be one. We depart to worship and serve the living God as his church. Amen. Now, St. John, may God take your minds and think of them. May God take your hands and work with them. May God take your lips and speak to them. Oh, and St. John, may God take your hearts and set them on fire. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.